It's nothing close to perfection But here's a free online lesson Of how I made false direction Well, what's up everybody? Um, hope you're all staying safe. I thought it'd be kind of a fun thing for me to do to show you all how I've made all my music thus far. Production and like songwriting is extremely important to me and kind of what I do all day. So for those of you who care about production and stuff, maybe I can teach you some tips and tricks. I really don't know what I'm doing, but let's get it. The first track we're gonna work with is False Direction. So here is the entire track in Logic. I work with Logic. Um, just lots of stacks we're working with. So the song basically just starts out with this synth vocal thing in which I have titled The Choir of Insecurity and that's just... I actually just recorded it on this Yamaha VSS30 I just gave it a, a, a big uh, and it recorded. It's actually broken now, but I just held down a chord and it pretty much runs through the entire song. So there's those voices going on in the song and I've also got this other one called Voices in My Head <laughs> um, where I'm just singing a, a constant uh, note as well. Yeah, so as far as synth sounds, we really just have that going on. We've got two guitars, which are panned all the way left and right, and a guitar. But this one guitar, um, right here, is just always playing a B. That's something I do a lot in my songs, is where throughout the entire song there'll just be one chord that doesn't change kind of creates this like dissonance but also creates like this glue that keeps the melodies like stuck together so you've got those same guitars later come in here yeah so for the bridge some pretty fun stuff going on. There's this one guitar that plays a constant note. The same one that I sing on the synth. The but the guitar is actually just going in a constant triplet, so it never really hits a downbeat. Some open strum. Halfway through the build-up, there's another guitar that's fighting against the triplet melody basically and the other one is actually on on the downbeat kind of creates this like cool percussive thing going on here in the first verse and build up we've got some acoustic guitars which are doing the same exact technique as the electric, where one guitar is playing a B, and I've got like a synth going underneath it here. It's like an organ sound. Yeah, so that, that's all the guitars. For the drums, um, it's all just MIDI programmed. So I've got these electronic drum samples. I'm not sure what like drum machine they're from. I just Got them on the internet for free. And I've got this fun little big crash. On all my crashes I had heck a ton of tape delay. So for the vocals, um, I add a lot of tape delay on certain different parts. It's kind of hard to walk through, but I like to layer my vocals, so. We've got one vocal going all the way to the left, one vocal going all the way to the right, and a vocal that is an octave lower. Yeah, so we got this. Some harmonies.
Yeah, so for the base, the base is really simple. Um, I've got the synth bass that goes throughout the song and the choruses. And I have a real bass, which plays some extra notes. It kind of just gives it more swing. One of my favorite things about this track is I have these chimes that are running throughout the song. And they're actually just the chimes from the house that I grew up in. Um, well, that's pretty much the song. Um, I hope you learned something new maybe or we're entertained somehow. Yeah, thanks for listening and just for all the support you've been giving me. Hope you're all staying safe and I will see you soon. Some people say that I look like Dwight Though I don't think you're remotely right Here's how I made Can I call you tonight? Okay everyone, here we are. Um, back in the studio. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing video for Can I Call You Tonight? <laughs> Let's go! Well here we've got the track. This is actually a really simple song. Probably the simplest production on Fuzzy Brain, which is ironic because it's doing the best. And here we've got vocal track, drum track, synth track, some bass, guitars, a busy sound, and the ear calls been set up, so like some samples. So let's take a look at these guitars. Here during the intro, we've got this swell sound, which is actually just Logic's like stock cascade experimental guitar sound. Um, so this is what it sounds like without the effects. Yeah, so it just kind of bounces around in your ears, kind of like trippy. Whoa. Here we've got the guitars and all the way right and left, just a simple clean tone with some uh, reverb. And people have been asking when I do this double thing, when it's like pan left and pan right, if they're two different takes and they are. So I don't copy and paste. There's a problem with phasing that happens or something. I don't know much actual logistics about engineering, but I can just kind of tell with sound and stuff. Um, things sound really strange. They're literally just copy and pasted left and right. There's like a phase thing that happens. Um, so when you do two different takes, it just makes it feel more alive and organic. Um, so they're two completely different guitar takes. So here's like the guitar lead that plays with the same uh, preset. And this strum, that's like a pad. All of them together. Yeah, so the whole song is just like that repeated pretty much. And on the verses, it's just an open strum. And then the same chords are played during the choruses, but with a more rhythmic thing. And um, here we've got... During the bridge, there's like this thing going on. Yeah, I would say the main theme on this entire song with every single track is like heck a ton of tape delay. People always ask like, what makes it sound so dreamy and like what is going on there. I turn on tape delay, which is not actual tape, it's just like a tape emulator. So it's just a plug-in, but it's a type of delay that saturates the delay a little bit and makes it distorted the more it goes. So what I like to do, like in my songs where there's like this kind of sounds going on, that's actually tape delay and what you do is modulate in time the speed of the delay and it the vocals at the very end of the song, there's like this thing going on. Uh, 
like all that going on um, is the timing of the delay just being warped as we go. And I do that pretty much on all my songs. Um, it's fun laser sounds. Now let's check out that bass. Oh yeah. The bass in the song is rather simple. Straight up just eighth notes between D and A. And that's it. Now for the synth parts. I just have this right here. Which is just one chord that loops through the whole song. So you can see I just like copy and paste it. The exact same thing is layered, just like an octave lower with a different sound, and that just runs through. Over these synths, we've got this synth lead going on. And this stacked on top. And that's obviously layered with this guitar lead. Now for the drums. Very basic drum beat. There's a kick layered with another kick. We've got the hat, a snare, layered like with a heavier snare. We've got this crash when the chorus starts. Sounding, it's fairly simple. That's the drums. Everything in the instrumental all together. Okay, so now for the vocals. A lot of y'all ask questions about the vocals on Can I Call You Tonight, so... Here they are, in all of their glory, and the glory they lack. Kaboom. So we've got one vocal take, panned not all the way to the left, it's 30, I don't know if it's 30%, I've, I've never known how to measure that, but it's left 30. I, close. Well, maybe I'm not. I had never bought a plug-in at this point, so this is all like Logic stock stuff, I'm using their tape delay, um, I'm using this long dream thing, another tape delay over a tape delay, so it's like two tape delays per channel or track. I feel close. Well, maybe I'm not. Heaven knows. I feel close. Well, maybe I'm not. Heaven knows. It's a spot. This vocal. an octave lower, same processing now. So at this point, we've got six different tape delays, like <laughs> just going everywhere. We've got this vocal. I also was really bad at organizing at this point, so they're all titled Dayglow Vocal One. I don't know. Let's see what that vocal is. Okay, um, so. <laughs> Just to add texture, make it feel like a group, I did a, vo a vocal higher. There's like a harmony. So here's a trick for the choruses, even though there's already delay going on, I wanted it to feel even more like uh, spacey. So this channel is the exact same thing that everything else um, has been, but it's completely wet. So there's like no dry vocal. So it's strictly the tape delay layered on top. Everything together. And that 
is the song. Um, I'm very grateful for this song, obviously. It's changed a lot for my life currently. Um, but I also don't want to mislead anyone by thinking, like, because this song is simple, it, like, happened in five minutes. I'm pretty sure, like, the final mix in which everybody hears was, like, my 46th mix or something. I was running back and forth between my bedroom and my car, trying to make the mix sound right and tweaking things, and so... I look at it now and think, like, oh, like, there's just these few steps, but it took a really long time to get to where... I wanted to be, and I remember when I released it, I was like, ugh, like I'm not liking this. And so, if you're out there, you're working on a song, and you see something like this that's done well on the internet, and you're like, I'm not good enough to, to make what I make, everyone gets discouraged. Um, everyone thinks that what they're doing is not good enough. I don't know. Um, yeah, so don't get discouraged if you're like sick of a song. I mean, maybe it's not good. That's not the end of the world. Everybody writes bad songs. I just want y'all to know that everything takes a lot of time despite how simplified I can make this. So, anyways, hope you're all doing well. Thanks for watching again. Um, I'll be back next week. Right on. I'm like, oh no, baby, don't you think I forgot? Here's how I made my song hot rod. Yeah. Okay, cue the scene. I'm like three years old on a camping trip with my family. So let's sing a song. What can we sing? It all began with a sample. So here is Hot Rod. Yeah, so the very beginning is the sample of my mom. Well, let's sing a song. What can we sing? I've always wanted to use that, so I just kind of threw it in this song and it kind of makes it, it just makes it really special. Let's start. Looking at the guitars, so there's like three guitars going on. So there's this guitar lead going on. Then there's this other lead that you can definitely hear that one. I feel like it's hidden. It's underneath that bum 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 thing going on. And then the other two guitars pan left and right. In the song, I mean, the verses are just G, D, E minor, the whole song through. Follows it, does this cool thing. <laughs> That's kind of goofy. There's this guitar lead. I wanted it to kind of feel like an obnoxious, like, like guitar song, you know? Um, because the whole premise of the song is like Hot Rod. So when I thought of Hot Rod, I thought of like big hair, like 80s style guitar solo, like really feeling yourself. So I added this like. And that other lead comes in. Yeah, so the bass is actually pretty... It's an interesting thing because it like kind of fights against the main rhythm guitar strumming here. Because naturally when you listen to the song, it's almost like you think that the bass line should be going boom, boom, boom. It's actually like boom, 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 boom. Uh, but it kind of gives like a fun groove.
Okay, so for the synth parts, this stuff's pretty fun. There's like the synth lead that goes all the way through the song. It's just like D. Climbing up. And layered underneath, there are xylophones that kind of make it more percussive and punchy. And kind of like more playful. And that just plays throughout the choruses. And we're about halfway done already. This is going to be a short video. Now for the drums, which I really feel like kind of drive the song. But yes, yeah, so we've got this kick. Layered with this other punchy kick. With this like punchy snare sample. And there's this other snare and clap combo thing going on. tambourine and the hats come in halfway through a whole instrumental all together I remember also originally I had written this instrumental, but I didn't have any like words. And I also felt like Hot Rod was kind of cheesy um, when I did come up with the words. And so I didn't think it was gonna make the album. So I kind of let the song sit for a month or two. And then um, I came back to it and I was like, you know what, this is a really fun song. And it seems like people have enjoyed it. So um, I'm glad I decided to put it on the album, that's for sure. Okay, so now checking out the vocals. Um, I'm doing the same thing that I normally do, just painting left and right, and one in the center. My memory is not like the other one. Is not like the other one. It's kind of like turn to strike my face. It's kind of like tape saturated. Always second place. Tell me again why. And I have this tape delay thing going on in the chorus as well. Where there's no dry signal at all. Um, it's just, it's just like fully echo. And we don't move like we used to do in the same way. Maybe you're not such a hot rod. Excuse my yawn. And that is the song. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Um, check this out. Hey guys, it is me, Sloan. I am going to show you how I made my dope song, Run the World. It is so dope and that's what it is. Run the World. Oh yeah. Okay. So Run the World was actually just like the first Dayglo song that ever existed. You know, in my young adolescence, I think I was like 17 or something, I wrote Run the World. It's one of the most basic, like, indie guitar progressions of all time. I've, I've seen a lot of people like saying it sounds like something else and you are correct, it sounds like a lot of other songs.
I can actually teach you real quick a common like chord change and a lot of indie rock, indie guitar music, but we're basically holding the bar, um, just a bar major chord. You throw your pinky down on the, the second string up, and then slide it up to a seventh, I think, and then back. So there's like tons of songs that do that same progression. You just do the same thing. Yeah. But the whole entire song through, we're gonna hear that. So let's get used to it. We've got Rock the Mics, good. Um, a preset I guess I really enjoyed, pan left and right. And we've got that chord progression um, I was talking about. It's actually a pretty bad uh, loop, but both of the um, recordings are at such different input levels. But it doesn't matter. It's rock and roll, baby. Literally throughout the whole song, that's all the guitars do. That exact loop, copy and pasted. Um, except for the like pre-choruses, in which it does this other chord progression, pan left and right. With an echo added to it. Yeah. Kind of a fun fact and tool for those of you who are recording and possibly don't have a bass um, in your possession but want to record some real bass sounds that aren't just like the thumb pick bass like <laughs> option that Logic has because I don't really like the sound of like natural bass samples. You know what I mean? Y'all know what I mean? Producers, you hear me out? I don't like like ever really when like bait oh, I don't need to dive into that. This bass throughout the song is just those eighth note hitting the uh, two chords. They B and E, those are the two chords in the song. Um, it's actually me playing those two notes on guitar. And Logic has in their pedal board right here, if it opens up, this pedal called Dr. Octave, which can make um, whatever you're recording an octave lower, so... If you want a bass sound, just record with your guitar, single notes, throw it into Dr. Octave, and you've got kind of a pretty good bass sound. For the synth parts, um, there's just one like little organ that's going back and forth between B. And anytime the synth shows up, it's just that copy and pasted, so, you know. <laughs> so for the drums, we've got these hats. Then I added this, like, delay thing. Tambourine and a tambourine hit. And a shaker. And obviously the drums. And this is all MIDI, just like Logic drumming samples. And they're all, they're all like compressed. At the time I was using this free plugin called Camel Crusher, which I guess I don't have anymore. It's not even showing up, but it's free. It's like a distortion. It's a distortion plugin for those of you who are looking for a free good distortion plugin. Okay. Vocals. It's like pretty raw. Um, here we've got the left and right that we do in every song. So pessimistic. So narcissistic. It's like a dry sound, one in the middle. So pessimistic. That's an octave higher. So narcissistic. So. And one that's just uh, fully the echo. 
So pessimistic So narcissistic So cynical Welcome to my own little world A false commitment Oh, I never listened yeah, and the pre-chorus part where it breaks down, it goes into this telephone vocal preset that Logic has. Oh, I don't think that I could be the one that you want me to be. It's hard for me sometimes to see the light inside my love. And I, 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 I... So for the choruses, where it's like a group chant, um, it is just hecka layered, um... I didn't have like a bunch of people in studio to, to yell I, um, I just had one friend over and then we just together just like panned a bunch of them left and right. Um, so we did four takes together, then I did three on my own, um, and it turned out to sound like this. And I, 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 water on the world, I, 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 water on the... And so for processing like the group ones, um, it's like just a little bit of reverb to make it feel like it's in a room um, that's big when in reality it was just my bedroom. Something I haven't really shared is like how I process the entire track, so the master. Um, for everything with Fuzzy Brain, I wanted it to feel like it had like a fuzzy like tape sound. Um, I love the sound of like tape harmonics and saturation and so on the stereo out, um, I would add like a simple EQ that Logic has called Enhanced Mix um, that just like brightens up the mix overall and then this song kind of drives it makes it sound distorted so more rock and roll and I have this plugin called J37 which emulates a, um, a tape machine um, it's a Waves plugin I think it's like 30 bucks and I just run everything through it to make it sound like it's going through tape um, and I, I use this plugin on individual tracks a lot too um, because it has like a good, um, you know, slap delay if you're using that on vocals or if you want to saturate something to make it sound like it's going through tape. This does a pretty freaking good job. Um, but that's literally the song. I mean, it's, it's a pretty simple, I know I keep saying that these songs are simple, but this is a pretty simple song. Um, I, was, I was definitely still just learning how to write. Um, so it, it holds a special place in my heart, but I definitely think of it differently than the other songs. Um, and I haven't really in these videos gone into like the uh, intent and integrity of the songs and like why I wrote the lyrics and like why I did XYZ. I'm just kind of showing the technical side because um, I feel like that's really ultimately what I think about the most. This song is kind of like, in my mind, just like a meme. You know, I don't know if you can tell by like everything I do and talk about it. Um, but yeah, I think the whole concept of like wanting to run the world, uh, th this song is ultimately just about like knowing that someone thinks this about you and you're like, well, how do I respond to it? And so it's just this whole like back and forth of ego and uh, narcissism that like, I don't know, I feel like everybody experiences a little bit in their life just this feedback loop of like, I'm not narcissistic, but I'm being told that I'm narcissistic, so am I narcissistic? And if they're telling me that I'm narcissistic, does that make them narcissistic if I'm not narcissistic? Um, maybe. And at the end of the song, um, we do that whole tape delay fun warp thing. And I, 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 I... And this is actually the first song that I freaking figured out how to do this um, and I just got obsessed with like um, warping delay and stuff but on this track at the end of the song yeah that's fun people that is the song um thanks for watching 
I will be back next week. I don't know if y'all have caught on, but I'm just going through the, the track list chronologically, so I don't know if that's the right word, but I'm just going through the track list straight up. And uh, so next week I'll be doing Fair Game. I think I'm gonna do the whole album. Um, I think I'm gonna do the whole album. Um, don't forget, like, to reach out if you have any questions or things you specifically want me to go into um, on the songs because I'm a bored young man. I'm trying to think of a, an outro I could do. I don't, I don't have anything. See you. See you next week. Yeah. Oh, you can't tag along. Just don't be lame. And so I made my song. Fair game. So I've really been looking forward to doing this one. Um, Fair game is actually probably my favorite song on the album. Yeah, I'm really proud of this one. So let's get going. We'll start off with the guitars. So, along with the bass line that goes throughout the song, there's a guitar that's layered on top of it. Just to make the bass sound like punchier. They've got this other guitar. For the choruses, you've actually got quite a few guitar parts going on. Um, so obviously that bass layer. The bass line changes during the chorus. And this like guitar strum, pan hard left, pan hard right. This bass top layer like goes all the way through. The second verse in, just to kind of make it feel different than the first verse, I added this like slap back delay guitar. Just so this song kind of keeps feeling like it's growing and evolving. So there's that fair game. Um, slap thing. This lead comes back. Yeah, so pretty much repeats, except for that slap back is on the second verse. And then we've got this funky guitar solo, which I actually did on the first take. I had no idea really how to like solo. I probably still shouldn't say that I have any idea, but I kind of have an idea now of like some like theory. But when I was writing this, I was literally just like, I got lucky when I played the lead on this part because I was just like messing around like, I don't know. I actually had that layered with a marimba, all the notes. I just think that's so fun. It was just like one of those moments where you're recording and you're like, oh my gosh. I think there's always magic in a first take. I try to leave the earliest takes as possible in my songs. I just feel like it makes them sound more real and alive, even though all songs are real. I think y'all know what I mean. Okay, so for the bass, um, we've got this progression going on.
thing happening in the pre-choruses. And repeats throughout the song. Okay, a lot of people ask me about the drums in this song. And this was a fun experiment. I was at a friend's house and then we just like recorded on his drum set in his attic. Yeah, so all the drums were recorded with one mic in a attic. I'll show you what it sounds like unprocessed, which is not the best drum sound, but it was like live drums, but it ended up me just like literally splicing every single note to fit the pattern I had in my head. Um, but yeah, it, it was definitely time, it took a lot of time. Yeah, the intro, this like crazy warp thing is, and warped the time up, so it's going slower to faster, and then, and then right on the snare, took the mix of the tape to lay out. Obviously spliced every note, um, distorted it, compressed it. A lot of the tight sound actually comes from this in Logic, it's called a noise gate. And I kind of used it like a compressor, where I just really tightened the sustain of, of the um, drums, and then fattened it up with fat effects, which comes with Logic. Obviously compressed it, EQ'd it with a console and a graphic EQ with drum bus um, preset and then I changed it around and then clear overheads, which are two presets that Logic just has and just kind of work. Yeah, there's all those claps. Um, some fills like that, I actually just like had to go and spice and chop up one sample that I had and just like make it exist. It's like took a kick sample and spiced it. And, um, so it pretty much ended up just being like sampled MIDI, but the source audio, the fact that it was recorded live kind of just makes it feel more organic. A ride and tambourine added. So there's a ride and a hi-hat that like just kind of has a really good drive, but it would be impossible to play. Um, literally the way that it is. Shaker, crack. Versus, I have this cowbell. Just fun, fun percussive stuff. This clap effect people have asked about. It's basically just like tape delay, feedback really high. And then, and I turn the wet down, it happens. This room effect after the guitar solo without effects on, this is what it sounds like. But I added with Space Designer, little room, and then took a lot of the dry out, so it sounds like it's But those are the drums. Okay, so for the synth and keys parts. In the pre-chorus, I've got this organ in my room. That's like an old pump organ that I got at a garage sale. Along with this Mellotron layered on top. So really like, during the chorus, it's actually a Mellotron as well. Which is just a really, really high register of a choir sample on a Mellotron, layered with this Mellotron. And the guitar lead layered. I 
I just feel like this song, I just perfectly like captures the sound I was going for with Fuzzy Brain. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just really proud of like the sounds going on in this. That's actually all the parts. Just copy and paste. It really doesn't change, except for that like marimba solo we looked at earlier. Um, oh, oh, here's a different organ in the in the bridge. Just like a analog lab Farfisa preset. Um, okay, so now for the vocals. So we started off with this lead vocal. Between disillusions. In the center, these two left and right doing the same thing. Outside the window. Noonday communion. A harmony. I never understood. So all the vocals are stacked and then going through this uh, J37 plug-in just to kind of saturate and like glue them together. I do that a lot with stacks, um, track stacks, just kind of make them feel like as if they're being all recorded at once. And a lot of people have been asking like my vocal chain. It totally depends on the song, but here we've got Vocal Rider, which is a Waves plugin that kind of works as a compressor into an actual compressor, Logic's deesser, the pedal board. I use this to distort vocals a little bit. Um, and this tape delay that Logic has, um, an EQ obviously, and then another tape machine. So these are like very warm sounding. Between disillusion. And then the pre-chorus, I just yeah. had more of a reverb you know, oh, oh, delay on there. I've been losing my mind for quite some time and oh, oh, oh. Here I have the call and response, oh, oh, oh. And then my dad is in here a couple times, um, doing some of them. He just walked in when I was recording and I was like, hey, come say some O's with me, papa. And he did. So, he's hidden in there. In the choruses I've got so the three layered, I was something so a lower octave. So there's a lot of layers coming Yeah, that's that's all the vocals. Can't remember if there's anything else people ask me specifically on this song. Anything I forgot to go over? Hopefully not. Um, but I'm really proud of this song. I think it's really fun. Definitely just like channels my um, my love for like Afro rock. Um, I think and just like fun like surf rock stuff. What if it just like got super, like super famous? That'd be crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Triple Dog Dare you guys like stream it in your sleep. Let's see if Spotify's algorithm catches on. That'd be so dope. Um, but, yeah, so everything together. Yeah. We'll play it for us. That's the song. Fair game. Is it fair? We'll never know. Oh! A lot of people have asked me on the lyrics um, a fair game. I haven't really broken down lyrics in general and I just don't really know how to talk about my lyrics. I think sometimes it's better just like leave it up for 
interpretation, but um, people have always asked if this is an Eric Andre reference. But I don't trust like that. And it is. Yeah, I used to be really into Eric Andre, and I thought that I don't trust like that skit was hilarious, where he like goes as a, to a car salesman or something. Um, but I threw that lyric in here. Um, so I just thought it was funny, and I thought this was a funny song. Adios. See you guys next week. <sighs> Goodbye. Harry! That's me. I'm looking to buy a fine automobile from him. I just don't trust anybody like that. You have a friendly car or one that talks? I don't trust something like that. I'm ready to buy right now. Okay, um... <laughs> Right now, I'm, I'm kind of using a pretty sketchy setup. I've got my phone duct taped onto a microphone stand so you can see this bird's eye view of the piano. Oh, and um, the reason we're at piano today is today's song is You know what I mean? I actually just recorded Dear Friend 2 um, in just one live take with a microphone and a piano. So I thought since that is the scenario, why don't I just do a piano tutorial? So this is more like how to play Dear Friend than how I made Dear Friend, but I don't know. Um, yeah, cool. So the song is in C. Um, so for those of you who don't play piano, that's this guy, all over the keys. These two guys that are friends, right down the hill from them. So, yeah, so the bass line, um, it's pretty simple stuff we're going to be doing, but the bass over here is just descending. C, sorry, up to C, then to the F, then to the G, then the second time through it's going to be C, B, A, G, F, C, D, G, and the right hand is going to be doing this over here, so it's like C, into this G shape, back into C, into the G shape, into an F, into a C, into a F shape kind of thing, into a G. It's actually going to do that exact same thing both times through, even though the bass line changes on that last, second to last F into a D. So together, it'll look like this. Verses. Um, yeah, pretty simple, like Beatles esque piano progression. Um, tons of fun. But oh my gosh, gotta make sure this is still recording. It keeps moving. Sorry guys if it moved there, but I've recorded this so many times already. Yeah, so for like the chorus kind of parts, um, we're gonna go into this minor. So after that, D. That D, G, we're gonna go into an A minor and descend from there. So, I know the world is changing quickly, and I couldn't tell you why. It's beyond my understanding, but I thought that if we tried, I'm growing older every morning. So the right hand, you're just doing an A minor to this like E minor shape to this D7 or uh, sorry F7 shape to E minor seven shape to D minor seven shape and 
something cool happens the second like chorus through um, uh, where after we play this two times through um, it might just be easier for me to play it when I get there and then explain it so because I really don't know what I'm doing with the piano I just kind of play by ear um, so yeah it's like I just don't know how I'm doing I leave my window open wide and as far as I'm concerned I forget from time to time oh, I'm so curious about you I just saw you in my dream you showed up just to surprise me and disappeared so suddenly yeah so here so suddenly we're gonna go F7 G F7 G um, but we're using a G with this little guy in there to just kind of add some spice and on the left hand we're just gonna be D E F G Apologies for being scattered just couldn't go to sleep I hope you don't think that I'm crazy that's really what you think oh, sometimes I just feel so hopeless I was in this room trying to formulate my feelings and to clear the thought of you yeah dear friend back into the verses That's how you play Dear Friend, kind of. I hope that was, a t I've never done like a piano tutorial. Some fun facts about the song. I see the number 222 a lot. Um, it's kind of like a sign of hope for me that I'm like doing something good. Um, that's a really vague explanation of it, but y'all are probably curious why I put that everywhere. Um, it's just kind of like a symbol that I see a lot often. And the song, pretty much unintentionally was two minutes and 22 seconds long and I didn't like realize that until I would edited it and I was like whoa that's kind of crazy. Well, I hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy um, and doing what you can to let your neighbors know that they matter um, and that they're loved and personally loved by you um, in direct ways. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that you're all doing good. I'm probably even going to have another video next week. I've just had a lot going on, um, but I'm sure you all understand. But um, yeah, I hope you're all doing good, and I will see you soon. I'm thinking this one is going to be legit. Because it's fuzzy brain and how I made it. Hey everyone, we are back. I've missed you guys. Um, I've always been like skeptical and people are like, like YouTubers are like, oh, I miss you. It's like, you're talking to a camera. How can you miss someone? But I seriously miss doing this and like having this interaction with you guys. Um, so glad to be back. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, it's a rainy day here in Austin, Texas. Doesn't rain too often here. Um, but anyways, Let's take a look at this file. Okay, I know I said Fairy Game was like my favorite song, but I think Fuzzy Brain is, I mean, considering it's the title track um, of the record, but I, I just love this song, and I think I took the most time, honestly, writing it and making sure it felt like something. Yeah, I guess we could start with guitars. There's actually a lot of guitar layers going on. Um, or no, actually, let's look at drums first, because drums are pretty funny. I There's just like an Apple loop called Analog Drum Machine 15. And that's that's the drum. Yeah, I just used that and layered it with the shaker that I recorded. Cool, so yeah, let's check out the guitars. We've got some acoustic guitars, pan left and right. We've got a 12 string that comes in on the choruses um, that is behind me and these 
three electric or four electric guitar takes. So we've got an open strum, kind of like hinting at the melody. There's like this plug guitar pan left and right. It goes on like the um, pre chorus parts. Kind of like a palm mute style. Um, yeah, but that's the electric guitar. And a lot of people have been asking me to like go through like plugins and processing. And one thing I do have to say about that, um, for those of you who do care about engineering and are like looking for the next plugin to like make your music better, um, all of this is like Logic stock stuff for the most part, or free plugins that I found online. Um, so I'm definitely a believer. And like learning how to use what you have rather than buying the next thing that might help you achieve a certain sound because um, you can get lost in a world of plugins and um, just spend a lot of money and that's not what music is about you know it's not about like having the most expensive stuff it's knowing how to use what you have there's tons of plugins I'd love to share um, if you're like really a plugin like like really, like I really do need a plug-in because I'm 100% missing something. Um, then message me and we can talk about plugins um, if I see your message. Um, but yeah, as all all of this for the most part is just like logic stuff or like free things that I found online. Um, I just use like these logic amps, you know, British Combo Clean. That's a preset. Um, but it's just about having good source audio recording it well. and um, I use a Focusrite Scarlett uh, 18i20 preamp. So like the same as the little red box, just with more inputs because I have all these synths and stuff now. On to the acoustic guitars. So the acoustic guitars are pinned left and right. They play throughout the entire song. Um, Pretty simple stuff. I believe it's like, sorry, I'm gonna play it on my electric. On the seventh fret, and I just play C, E minor, F, C, E minor, F. Those like pre-chorus parts is a D minor into a G major seven, I think. Um, it's just like a G right here where your pinky would normally be underneath. It's just, you stay, your first finger stays on that uh, D minor shape. Into a C, into a uh, A minor. Playing outside, steady winter. My heart feels like such a mixture. Shapeless, I stare at a picture. E minor into an A major. D minor into G major 7, I think. Into a C. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you play Fuzzy Brain on the guitar. Definitely the most like folk influenced song. I loved Connor Oberst um, and like Bright Eyes and like that just whole world of music for a while. Um, I still do, but I feel like this song is really heavily um, like Bright Eyes influenced with a mix of like psychedelic synth stuff. Um, that was my goal with the song, so maybe it worked. I don't know. I've never heard my songs before. Um, I just make them. Yeah, I've never heard my songs like for the first time before. So, 
you guys have a much different experience with these songs than me, so I'm jealous of you. I wonder what it's like to hear my music. Um, I'll never know. Anyways, um, the bass is very simple too. It's just Just like open notes. Just following like the root, no like melodic stuff going on. Okay, onto the synths. We've got this drone, like Farfisa sound, I believe, I have from Analog Lab. Um, I know it's a box. Cool. Literally that chord just goes through the entire song. It's like this Analog Lab, which I believe is, yeah, so Farfisa home organ preset in Analog Lab. Just following the melody as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, and this is a pretty iconic, important part of Fuzzy Brain too, is this Mellotron sound. Um, I have, oh, it's actually just a Logic Mellotron. Um, it's just like a string sample mixed with the male choir sample playing those chords. Oh, I, I forgot to show you this 12 string. Yes, yeah, so this 12 string comes in with it. Kind of almost makes it feel like it's a sample from an old record or something. Yeah, I remember I had this song written on guitar for quite a while, and then once I put that Mellotron sound in, I was just like, okay, like I know what this song is now. It was a really good feeling, um, just trying that out. Because um, I believe that was my first take. Yeah, there's some little notes in there that was just like a freestyle thing, probably just crying, playing it. The second pre-chorus in, there's like this psychedelic warp sound that a lot of people ask about. It is an analog lab sound as well, running through like this tape sound. But I was messing around with it. And the pitch uh, wheel is like, just really crazy going up. And so I was like, that'd be cool if it just rose into the right note, so. It's just like the modulation um, rising into the note. So for vocals, we're going to check those out. Pretty much the same thing as all these other songs that we have. A pan all the way left, pan in the middle, uh, pan to the right. Uh, so it's like three takes, really with like a tape sound to this plug in. I always shout out. Where do I begin? Just with that. Uh, no, I don't understand it either. The like slap back feedback don't delay think really I makes can. it. Kind of like the signature sound. Fuzzy brain. Call it what you want. I felt so distant lately. As if I were not. Got harmony coming in. Just came a little bit to the right. Such a mixture 
shapeless I stare at a picture I don't know her But I miss her Why, oh why Such things La -da -da. Can't go wrong if you get la da da There's a third part harmony um. In my head There's rain inside my skeleton frame a hurricane within my rib cage. I never left, but I never stayed. I'm cleaning out the flaws in my brain. Okay, well, all right. Well, that is Fuzzy Brain. Um, thanks for watching. You guys have just been troopers, just listening to me ramble um, and walk through these songs. Um, it's been tons of fun. We're getting closer to the end. Um, so, I guess I'm just thankful for you guys. Um, that sounds really cliche, and it's easy to be vague. Um, like as an artist, like thank you for like being a fan, but like I really want you guys to know that you're each like really appreciated. Um, although I don't know a lot of you personally, um, I want to someday, I'd love to um, be able to get to know you, um, but I just think it's so incredible and I feel so blessed that you guys like watch these and I can be a teacher because I definitely didn't think when I was making these songs like people would care um, to watch how I made them. Um, so thanks for thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. I'm sorry if I don't reply. I get a lot of messages. Um, not that I'm like a big deal, but I can't see all your messages um, all the time. But if you do have a serious question or anything about like mixing, I'll I'll try to answer it. Um, but anyways, I hope you're all staying safe. Um, I hope you're washing your hands. <laughs> um, just wash your hands, you know? Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I already said that so many times, but thanks for watching. Um, I will see you guys next week. <laughs> oh, um, and Okay, that was awesome. Hey everyone, just to give a little context here, I thought it'd be fun to wake up and then immediately record this, and turns out, I looked like a raccoon. Um, I didn't look at myself in the mirror or anything before I started recording, and I should have done that. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the video. Bye-bye now. Everyone, we're back. We're checking out Junior Varsity. Um, first lie we're gonna uncover in this song, um, CSI Files, we're figuring this boy out. The drumming in this song, we're just gonna go ahead and start with drums on this as well. We're, we've got Logic's very own AI intelligence, Gavin, this guy. <laughs> um, he's the dude on the track. So there's literally just a robot playing these live drums, I just went and like did this, and I feel like, myself included, I used to always really doubt Logic's drummer, but it's good, it's pretty freaking good. I mean, my man Gavin definitely has his flaws, but don't we all, you know? Um, we're all human, except for Gavin, Gavin's AI, but still. The drums in Junior Varsity are straight up played by an intelligent robot. I'd say that's cool. We've got like a shaker that I recorded live, the tambourine 
that Gavin recorded as well. Yeah, you can just automate like the volume, so like in different parts, like at the end of the song, um, I just went through and just really like cranked up the volume, or like. Let's go to the guitars. So we've got two guitars pan left and right. Um, just simple electric guitars doing an open strum. One take throughout the whole song. I tried to make this song full of just long takes because I wanted it to feel like a more folk. Ultimately, I don't know if you guys listen to Whitney. If you don't, you should. Uh, I was really in love with like Whitney's, um, I'm drawing it blank, the record with the flower on it. Um, the last song on the record it's called Follow, and it has like this trumpet lead and this like singing thing that goes with it. But um, I don't think it's too similar, but definitely a good song. You should check it out. But yeah, I just wanted it to feel like a live recording, like going through tape. Another shout out to the J37. Um, the whole song's running through it. Also with the 12 string underneath it the whole time as well. That's in all the Fuzzy Brain songs. Bass is doesn't come until the second or the first pre-chorus. It's kind of got a groove too, if I remember correct. It's looking like it does. the rest of the song it really just like goes through and repeats um, just to add more like texture right here on the second pre-chorus these two guitars are strumming like they did the first time but I added another layer not panned at all just right in the middle um, just holding the uh, root major which I believe is a B. I can't remember what key this song is in. I think it's B. I think it's B. Right. No, it's uh, C sharp or D flat. Um, someone correct me. I'm, I'm waiting to get corrected. I definitely don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to like keys and um, scales and stuff because I can't read music. Um, I'm an illiterate um, musician. I just feel it, man. Keys, which I think really give this song a lot of the texture that it has, um, come from these organ and mellotron sounds. So you've got this organ that shows up in Fuzzy Brain, um, this Farfisa organ that I have from Arturia's analog lab. Um, it just plays like. Let's celebrate. Just really set in the back. I try to add things that you don't even notice because it just gives songs like just like a hug almost. It's like you know it's there, but it's like you can't see it. Like really focus. Yeah, and it's layered with this whirl insert, which is from Analog Lab as well. Um, running through some tape with some like pretty heavy saturation. Whirl insert does. Mellotron 
my string and flute Mellotron just from Logic's stock Mellotron plugin. Um, just playing the root of the chord as well. Um, second time it comes around, does the same thing. And on the big crash, uh, like trumpet solo moment, it's just holding that chord on the bell shot. It's kind of its dissonance, so we're right on the notes like on top. Yes, but those are the keys. Um, the songs, three chords, but mostly just two, those two, um, which would be capo on the first fret, G, C, can you feel that change to a D? Feel that change coming around. Wait, so it is in. A flat, that is the key it's in. That is pretty much the instrumental. Um, oh, the trumpet. Um, so the trumpet is fake. Um, I hate to admit it for those of you who care about those kind of things. I don't, I don't know. I, I would have rather recorded a live trumpet if I'm being honest, but I definitely didn't have a trumpeteer in my possession as most living moments I don't. Logic's trumpet, which sounds pretty impressive. Um, and I threw it through this delay or um, reverb through a realistic room and try to make it sound more like a real recording. Um, I humanized it. I have no idea how there's a knob called humanize and you can decide what percent of human you want um, kind of freaks me out, but it exists and I turned it up, man. Got to play through MIDI. Layered with another uh, fake trombone. So moral of the story, pretty much like this song is just me and a bunch of robots vibing. This is a robot song, post-apocalyptic um, freak show free admission. Anyone's welcome. Let's get it. So for the vocals, you know what we're going to say. We've got pan left and right, um, one in the middle. Can you see it now? Run it through the J37. In the leaves. Um, yeah, some harmonies. It's all around us now. As foreign as it seems. Here's this crowd, which is a fake crowd that I simulated, just me singing things like, But they can surely leave. I did finish the song and record it, um, like, two days before I left for college, so I wasn't going to have my, like, studio with me. Um, so I recorded it really quick. I'd written the song a long time ago, but I just felt like it was really, like, organic and... I always get weird with recording like organic sounding songs because I get so articulate with m mixing it and I didn't want to have the time. So I kind of waited till I was like about to leave and I just like recorded it really quick um, and then went to college and mastered it and put the album up like days later. Um, so this was kind of like a last moment <laughs> song, which I wanted it to feel like that because, you know, it's a song about. Um, graduating anything but for me it was like graduating like out of the small town I was from and the school I was going to and moving to a new place. 
Um, also, one thing I wanted to say, a lot of people have been asking me questions about like lyrics and stuff. Um, I kind of like intentionally don't talk about lyrics in these videos, kind of for a couple reasons. Um, I don't want to act like I'm some like, you know, Bob Dylan, like super uh, deep, impressive lyrics or anything. Um, but my lyrics are personal to me and I think really the best kind of songs is like when the listener can hear it and come up with a personal story attached to it. Um, and I feel like too often um, artists will like try to explain their lyrics and be like this is what the song means when it can mean a lot of things. I feel like a good song should be able to mean a lot of different things. Um, so I kind of just like let you guys decide and I kind of keep my personal things to myself when it comes to like my lyrics. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously this song, I kind of already explained, it's just about like moving on from something and like feeling okay with change. Um, but as far as like details, I, I think it's best if like we kind of keep it mysterious and you guys attach it to your lives and um, I keep it to mine because the song does hold a special place in my heart. Um, it's right here, right there, just right in the corner of my heart is where it is. Tape. The main thing I wanted it to feel like a tape song, like straight from the 70s and like it had gotten, the real master had like gotten lost in somebody's truck that was too hot and then it got left in there and then somebody found it a couple years later because like their grandpa knew someone else's grandpa and then um, the master got handed to someone and then they're like okay here's the song and then that song was played on like some tape to mp3 converter and that's what I wanted it to sound like. Um, let's go through this tape. Can you see it now? Yeah, and obviously thanks to Gavin. The change gives more. The but yeah, that's that's the song. I'll play a little bit. That's the song. Well, thanks for watching. Um, I will be back next week doing nicknames. And then we've got Liz Serene. And then, I don't know, another album. I made a song, called it nicknames I've got good hair, call me thick mane And under that you'll find a freaky huge smart brain A touchdown slam dunk, I love sports games Okay, real quick before we look at the song I just wanted to show you guys this um, I am straight, I'm straight up like a YouTuber now. Check this out. YouTube straight up gave me an award. And it's like, look at this. That's a real thing. Look at me with my vlog camera and, well, I mean, we're, we're doing this, guys. I did not think I would be doing this. You know, it is what it is, but guys, we're, we're, we've made a series here. We made a freaking YouTube series. So without further ado, we're not gonna let that do go any further than it has. Let's look at nicknames. So this song actually has quite a few layers. There's quite a few things going on. So first,
first let's look at the percussion elements. So drums and all like the tuned stuff going on. So Logic has this kit called Tribal Kit, which I think is here in like the world section. And I think it's just like an, an a go-go or like a tuned bell without any plugins. And then obviously tuned it. And we have this little fill going on. Just a normal kick and snare. Another kick layered here and a clap every once in a while. Oh, and effects wise, there's this little intro of a small excited party sound effect. This isn't any party, it's a party of excited people, I think speaking Spanish. But yeah, anyway, so for the drums, we've got, yeah, that kick we were talking about, snare, kick, and an 808 little doo -doo -doo. Then the pre-choruses come in with this hat pattern. With a fill into the chorus, I add a shaker and another snare um, that hits a little bit harder. Where is it? Oh, here it is. And then another snare that's halfway through the choruses that'll come in and it goes like. Yeah, so those are the core elements. I mean, it varies every once in a while, um, but I think really what made this song was this concept. And I just kind of built around that with the thing. Um, then I came up with this lead. We'll go ahead and move to the keys parts. Um, yeah, it's kind of inspired by This Must Be The Place, Talking Heads, Melody. Um, there's a Vampire Weekend song that it sounds a lot like too, which I didn't mean to do, but you know, I guess like a subconscious inspiration sort of deal, but it's just this home organ farfisa sound, which is throughout Fuzzy Brain quite a bit. A bass keys bass throughout the whole verse. Then for the pre-choruses, these chords play. Through those chords coming. Um, octave jump there. Um, yeah, and then the breakdown. Got that little solo thing. Yeah, it's kind of, so that I think that was on like one take too, I was just like, I want it to feel like it has this like groove party kind of sound, because we've got the small excited party just going throughout at the end, and they're just shouting. Yeah, fine, then the harmony comes in. So the guitar parts 
or actually, well, we'll look at the bass. So all of the bass to be more percussive is actually layered with the guitar. So like, there's a guitar playing the exact same thing. Just to kind of make it feel fuller. So that's a trick for those of you who are trying to make your bass sound fuller and don't have like plugins. The Logic has a plugin called an exciter, so that type of thing will like liven up your bass sound, but the trick that I find is just play the same thing on guitar an octave higher. Yeah. Um, that's all the bass parts. It just kind of changes throughout the song, but I mean, it's the concept, it's the heart of, of the song. Um, yeah, and then the guitars, the guitars we've got. The guitars on this song were really random recording. They were just kind of like sitting back in the mix and just me just kind of messing around using the first take I did. Like I wanted this song to feel really loose and like um, groovy, so I wanted to use live takes and not time everything completely perfect, although I still do flex time <laughs> everything. Um, I tried to flex time it, but a little bit with a swing, um, at least on the guitar parts. Yeah, um, so now for the vocals, we've got pen left, right, middle, going through a little tape deal. A new confession. People have been asking my vocal chain, so I will just go ahead and show it now. Come so far, you deserve to see it, so I can go through a noise gate. It also looks different every time, but at least for nicknames, this is what we've got going on. We've got a noise gate, this plugin from Waves called Vocal Rider, a de -esser going hard, um, a pedal board, which is crazy. I was still um, adding saturation in my vocals via Double Dragon Deluxe Overdrive, running it through a uh, CLA-76 compressor that Waves does as well, and then EQ. So this is how I did my vocals. You're a rather intelligent adolescent, and that's who you are. Very nice. Some harmonies. I my Never meant to be that way. I just wanted to be kind. Yeah. Um, also, there's like lots of group vocals going on. Take was just me a bunch of times panned in different parts. You know, shouting a couple things like. And that's who you are. Whoa. So unexpected. Yeah, things like that. And then also in the chorus, there's like a call and response. And oh, I know I'm not everything you thought I was. Who you say you are is who you are. You know I tried, you cried. I'm not all you had thought. Who you say you are is who you are. And I'll do my best, my best. You're still gonna make mistakes. Who you say you are is who you are. So please forgive if it's really just some big nickname. Who you say you are is who you are. Yeah, well that, that straight up is the entire song. Um, this one was tons of fun to make. I remember it took me a really long time and a lot of different versions to get to this, but throughout the entire time I had this at least. I felt like that was kind of the staple of the feeling of the song, and so I kind of just built everything around that. Um, but yeah, that's that's the entire song. I just wanted it to feel funny, you know? Um, and so, yeah. That is nicknames. 
everyone. We've got one more song next week. I'm doing Listerine. And then you have seen everything that I have done and how I did it to a controlled extent. Um, so I hope it's been fun. I hope it hasn't like ruined the magic of any of these songs for you. Um, it definitely doesn't for me. It kind of maybe shows you a different perspective of how songs are made. But as always, send me questions. If you have serious uh, questions about um, production and my one piece of advice would be uh, for young producers, us young people making music out there in our bedrooms, um, keep doing you, you know, keep having fun. Don't be afraid to experiment and don't be so critical of yourself. Um, because we're, I mean, we're, we're having fun. We're in our bedrooms, you know, like, um, music is about having fun and so often I get messages that are like so I'm like how do I make it like how, who do I message to like get more views and stuff and like I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you now like it's so awesome having you guys like respect what I make and everything but like having views doesn't make you feel any better like I still have days where I'm like this is terrible you know and I'm super critical of myself and so Validation doesn't come from, or validation or like confirmation of um, artistic confidence doesn't come from viewership or the amount of people listening. In all honesty, it kind of makes it harder. I, I've become more critical of myself since I've gained an audience. But I think really music is more fun when you're just having fun making it. Um, so just make songs. Show them to your family and friends, and um, I don't know, just just be rock and roll, you know. Um, yeah, well, I'll see you guys next week. Hope you're staying safe. Um, Goodbye. I wrote a song called Listerine. I'm honestly not sure what it means But might someday Anyways This is how it was made Boom! We made it! Yeah! Here's the last track of the fully finalized Fuzzy Brain um, Listerine This is definitely the most complex song um, So this might be a long video Hopefully I can just like condense it all, but there's a lot of tracks. Too many tracks, I will confess, going on. Okay, let's go. Um, yeah, so here's the whole thing. A lot of um, bus, like, stacks. I feel like I figured out how to do that on the screen, so I just kind of got carried away with it. But, like, all the actual tracks, this is what we're looking at. I mean, there's a lot going on. I'm not like trying to claim like this is like the craziest file or anything. I'm sure some of y'all know like Jacob Collier and I'll look at his files and I'm like, but this is a lot to me. It took a while to mix and to get right, but I'm pretty proud of it. Let's start with the drums. That cowbell is kind of like the heart of the song. For those of you who like really care about um, samples, you might know about That Sound Drums, but there's a pack from That Sound called Neon. Um, just good drums. There's like cowbells and stuff in it. And this is the original sound. So I just spliced it up, got one of them, um, added a little room sound to it. Delay. EQ. So that goes through a lot of the song. Kind of serves as like a metronome almost. But we've got it layered with some electronic drum samples. Which are layered exactly with an organic kick and snare. The hat. crash every once in a while. 
And this is pretty much the drum pattern throughout the song. Um, I really don't think it actually does change. Maybe on the build up, I might have changed the velocity or something. Yeah, there's like that three hit cowbell thing. It took me a really long time. I got so finite, like mixing with um, the cowbell for a little bit. I was just like getting way too far into detail. Um, should not spend that much time on a cowbell, but I did. We've got this little sparkle thing that goes throughout all Fuzzy Brain. Um, layered with another synth. Um, yeah, let's look at the synths. So, there's this phaser string thing layered with um, this like CMI sample um, from Analog Lab. Some really good presets and sounds in Analog Lab for the CMI that I've been using a lot lately. Um, no, nowhere else really on Fuzzy Brain I used CMI except for the stream. And all the other synth sounds um, from this Microcorg XL. Um, yeah. Yeah, so all of these synth sounds that look like waves, like actual files, those are Microcorg. All these MIDI files are Analog Lab. So there's this one layered with another Microcorg sound, which is basically the exact same sound, but it just kind of doubles it. This swell um, pad is from the microcord. Um, just played some chords. And everything's pretty much going through like um, Echo Boy, which I shout out a lot. Throwing through some chorus, just Logic's chorus. EQ'd, obviously. Um, and then the build up, we've got another CMI sample. Yeah. Then that same sound I used in Fuzzy Brain, that build it is this guy. Yeah, and just repeats. Um, so all the synth parts, if I were to simplify it, it was all just like really collecting sounds that I liked from the CMI and the microcorg. Trying to just like condense it because this song had a lot of things going on and went through a lot of different directions till it got to this final version. But yeah, and all the synths are just being EQ'd through the same. It's a really simple. I was just learning about buses and I got excited. Um, cool, so, so the guitars for this song, for some reason, I really don't know why, um, I triple layered. So I panned all the way left, panned all the way to the right, and did one in the middle, the same take. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and this guitar sound. Um, is pretty much Logic's um, new wave chorus. For those of you who are looking for like the indie chorus guitar sound, um, that's a great starting point. I would say you should probably edit it a little bit, you know, tweak around so you get what you want. Um, but yeah, I have all the guitars pretty much strictly on the new wave chorus running through a bus that is a triple chorus, like another chorus, which isn't mixed all the way up. Um, but yeah, and then an Echo Boy delay just uh, to widen it up, kind of give it more um, room. And 
And there's this other guitar doing the lead. Um, Uh, and I think that's really all the. Oh no no no! So the build up, we've got just open strums coming from the rhythm guitar. The lead with more of a delay sound. It's mostly coming from Echo Boy, Effect Rack. Um, yeah, just really building up, and then I did this epic guitar solo 80s thing. Um. Some guitar minis. Um, pretty straightforward, just a lot of layers, did a lot of takes, a lot of revision until I got to this point, so I don't want to like oversimplify it, but um, the song musically is pretty simple. The guitar is just like three chords, um, and the melody just kind of like loops in on itself, but conceptualizing this idea and really like getting it into its final form took quite a while lost my mind a little bit recording and mixing this and like I couldn't hear the song anymore. I don't know if any uh, songwriters or producers like relate with that feeling but like when I listened to the song like I just heard noise. Like I seriously didn't process like oh this is the song. Like I would listen to this at least a thousand times. At least. Probably way more. So now we check out the bass. So bass is really fun, it's got like a cool groove. Yeah, it's kind of following the guitars. Then on the verses I added that double that I did with nicknames, um, where I layered the bass with a guitar an octave up. And then the second verse through, I had a little boom, 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 upbeat. Yeah, that's the bass. Yeah, the bass. Oh, the low end, dude. Oh, the low end of the bass, man. Gotta love the bass. No treble, no treble. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, everybody. This coffee is um, kind of cold. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so you've got pan left, pan right, pan in the middle. I just processed, I just friggin' processed the heck out of these drum, um, out of these vocals, oh my gosh, I got so carried away with the, the vocal processing here, it's a monster, oh my gosh, I really do think I overdid the vocals, I'm gonna be honest, but the song exists, but anyways, yeah, we got pan left to right. I stop but then I hesitate. What's the point of leaving if we can't even wait? She's thinking of what she could say. Fifteen days that I spent finding out what you meant. A completely wet reverb vocal. I thought that this was 
something different than before. Now we're changing shape inside your brain and starting to reform. Oh, Lord, now I'm speaking words with that thinking before. And the vocals are also layered with that group vocal. I knew that I wouldn't change. Um, which is just like really washed out stack of myself. Yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 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 That is the song. That is Listerine in its entirety. I hope you guys have enjoyed um, seeing me break down all these songs. And I hope you've learned something. Um, I hope you've gotten something from this. Maybe been entertained. I hope that you're making music, and if you're not making music, that is okay. You don't always have to be productive. You also don't have to be a musician um, at all. I love what I do. Maybe you love something else. There's probably things that you're really good at that I wish I could be good at. Um, you know, it's just kind of the way the world goes around. Everybody's got their own thing. Um, and for me, I found this is what I'm obsessed about. I love writing and making music. Um, so, the fact that you are all here um, tagging along and watching these videos is really awesome. Uh, I feel very blessed to have you guys um, just like be invested and curious about what I'm doing. It's really cool. Um, but anyways, again, I've had so much fun breaking down all these songs and probably pretty soon I'll be breaking down these new songs that I'm working on, um, and I'm very, very, very excited to share um, what I have been working on the past two years since Fuzzy Brain was done, um, because I think it's really fun and good, and I think you guys are going to like it, and it's, in my opinion, just better music. I think Fuzzy Brain's great, but I'm stoked for this record. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Anyways, thanks for watching. I won't be back next week um, because there's no more songs to break down that are out, but thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon. I look forward to it tremendously. Okay. Goodbye. Right on.